This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. We're going to dive in and now tackle the eyes. First, let's hide the head vector. So that way we can see the sketch and we can reference the eyes. Next, I'm going to create a new vector layer. And I'll name this one eyeballs and then hit enter. Hit S on the keyboard to select the draw shape tool. And I can use the oval from the top of the list. And we can turn on auto fill and auto stroke. That's fine for this part. Let's come over here to the style panel. And for fill, we'll change it all the way to white and then click OK. And then for the stroke, we can keep it set to black. For the width, I'm going to change that to two for right now. And then we can zoom in and start our process. Starting with the front eye, I'm just going to click and drag and move down and fill in the shape as close as I can to the sketch and release. Next, let's click on the transform points tool to ensure that we have this shape selected and then use command C or control C if you're on windows and then command V or control V if you're on windows to copy and paste and then holding in shift, I'm just going to click and move this to the left by holding in shift. It locks us to the X axis so we can't move it up or down on accident and we're just going to move it right over there. Now, using the transform points tool again, you're just going to come in here and start to resize this. And this one's a little bit more squished due to the perspective. So we're just going to come in here and try to match it as close as we can to that original sketch. And this is looking pretty good. And there we go. So now we have the eyeballs established. Let's hide the eyeballs really quick and create some lids. I'll make a new layer, make it a vector. We'll name this one top eyelids and then hit enter. Now using the draw shape tool, once again, S on the keyboard, I want to come down here to the layers panel and just reveal the head really quick and then grab the eyedropper or L on the keyboard and just come over here and click on the head. That's going to bring all of that style property information back. So that way we don't have to reselect the skin color and all of that. So now we're going to hide the head once again, and we're still on the top eye lids. Now, one more thing before we draw these out, let's click on fill one more time. And using the color picker, I'm going to drop the color a little bit, just so it's a little bit darker than it was previously, and then click OK. Once again, using the draw shape tool, S on the keyboard, we'll select oval with auto fill and auto stroke selected. And let's change the width to two. Actually, let's go with three. So with the width at three, I can come in and just draw out an oval like this and just kind of bring it down like so. Then using the add point tool, come in here and we're just going to add two more points to this shape just like that. And then taking the transform points tool, we can come up here and start to adjust this so that the lid is curved up like so. And if we were to bring the eyeball back, it currently looks like this. Now you might be wondering, well, this isn't looking that great. <laughs> Well, we still need to do the masking, so don't worry about it. And right now I'm going back here to the eyeballs and changing my width to three because I originally had the line set to two, but looking at it, I'm kind of thinking I want to go back to three. So we set it back there for right now. With the first top eyelid established, we're just going to do what we did before by copying and pasting it over to the other eye. So grab it and then Command C, Command V, copy and paste, and just bring it over like so. And we can place it just like that. And the bottom eyelids, we're going to cheat even more. 
With top eyelids selected, we can duplicate that layer, rename it bottom eyelids, and then coming over here, we can click on the transform layer tool. And at the top, we have the ability to flip vertically or horizontally with these layers. So we're going to flip vertically. And because the origin point was a little bit offset, you can see it kind of flipped down like this. It's not a big deal. We can just bring it up and get it established. Now, the bottom eyelids are not going to be as obvious as the top ones. So I'm going to hide the eyeballs and then using the bottom eyelids layer, I can just bring these up to get it close to where we have it with the sketch. And again, all of this can be modified as we continue moving along, but this is looking pretty close. And then you have your eyeballs just like that. Let's create some pupils next. The pupils should be below the eyelids, so that way if they move up or down and intersect with the eyelids, they will appear behind. So for the pupils layer, when I make this, it's going to be a vector. I'm going to place it below the bottom and top eyelid layers. And we can name this one pupils. Using S for the draw shape tool, I'm going to come in here and disable auto stroke. So that way I'm just creating a filled oval. Coming over here to the style panel, I can drop the fill color down to black and then click OK. Starting right here with the sketch, I'm just going to come in here and it doesn't have to be exactly the same shape, but just come in and draw something that looks similar to the sketch and bring it up like so. And then like before, we can use Command C and then Command V to copy and paste and bring the pupil over here. And we could even shrink it a little bit just to kind of help with that perspective with the back eye. So now when you put it all together, you have something that looks like this. So there's one more step we need to take to make this work, and that is masking the eyes. So with bottom eyelid selected, hold and shift, click on eyeballs, and then right click group with selection. This will throw everything into a new group. You can name it eyes and hit enter. And then we want to double click on eyes to go inside of the layer settings. The fourth tab on the top is masking. If you click on this, you'll see that we have three options under group mask. We want the last option, hide all. So click on that and then you can click OK. You'll see what happens here is with the group, we are now masking everything and everything's adhering to the eyeballs. There's only one small problem and that is we don't have stroke lines for this mask, but luckily that's easy to correct inside of Moho. Just double click on eyeballs to go inside the layer settings and then go to masking and here at the bottom, you'll see we have exclude strokes. Just click on that and then click OK. And the strokes are now back in place and everything is looking good. So from here, we can make some more adjustments. I kind of feel like we could bring these points out just a little bit more to help with the curve and go to the bottom eyelids as well and just do the same thing. Make sure we select the point and just move it up like that. And there you go. And you can see that this one's looking okay since it has a smaller area to work with, but that's looking better. And of course, as we move on, we will be polishing up different elements as we see fit. And we'll probably even dedicate a whole section to polishing just because it is a big part of the process. But as you can see now, our pupils are in place. And the benefit of this is when we rig them up, when the pupils move, you can see now that they don't go onto the face. And because of how they are set up with layers with the eyelids, they go behind the eyelids as well. And it just makes animation a lot easier. So we'll pause here. And up next, we'll keep building up the face. 
To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit tunefiles.com.